Hey there fellow pirates and One Piece fans, have you ever wondered what would happen if we swapped the straw hat captain Monkey D. Luffy with a completely unexpected character from the One Piece world? Well, prepare to set sail on an epic adventure as we dive deep into the Grand Line to witness the chaos, comedy and sheer unpredictability that unfolds when Luffy steps aside and another character takes the helm. Join us on this thrilling voyage as we explore the what ifs of One Piece like never before. Four. So, welcome! Today we're going to do another random piece story. As always, we're going to take a random character and see how they would fit into the role of the main character. As always, we take a random character and see how well they would work as the main character of One Piece. It's not Ramba, we're going to do another role of the random character generator just in a second, but first here are a few rules. All of the Straw Hat Pirates still join the crew. But first, here are a few rules. All of the Straw Hat Pirates still join the crew. It, the only real difference is, is that our new protagonist doesn't really have the Gomu Gomu no Mi or whatever its actual real name is if you know a bit more, right? But if they have a Devil Fruit or some sort of special weapon or something different, it is still in their possession. But if they have some sort of pirate crew, they are not affiliated with that pirate crew anymore. They just left it or somehow they have never been connected to them and just start out at the exact same time when Luffy would have started out on Fusha Village. So let's see who our protagonist will be this time. Okay. The protagonist of today's story is Randolph. That is actually quite interesting. He's a homie and he has some sort of very powerful fighter in him. He actually was one of the people we saw during the Whole Cake Island arc and he battled against I think mainly Carrot. So if we take a look at how strong Randolph actually is, we will all be surprised. Randolph is a skilled spearman. And his spear is two-sided, so he can attack from different angles and use these skills to defeat his enemies. When he was active for the Big Mom Pirates, he actually was going around different islands and was capturing different devil fruits that Big Mom wanted. So Randolph has to be really powerful if he was able to sail around the new world and get those devil fruits. How he exactly ended up on Fusha Village? Well, let's just say you have to use a bit of imagination to see how it would all turn out. But now, let's take a look at how it would actually go when he goes for Luffy's story. First, we have the Fusha Village scene. Fusha Village in the Roman's Dawn arc is very simple. Randolph only has to take care of the Lord of the Beast and he can easily do that. He was capable of fighting against characters like Carrot and also shortly against the other Straw Hat Pirates who were there on Whole Cake Island, at least when they were still in the forest part where they had also a battle against Brulee. And Randolph is fast, powerful and smart. Some people thought that he might have the soul of Mihawk but that's obviously not the case because why would he be a spearman then and not a swordsman? So yeah, not that soul, but somebody powerful enough to actually be active in the new world. Now, Roman's Dawn continued. Alvida and Kobe is not going to be a problem. He is going to deal with that and Kobe is going to get together with him to get to Shellstown and then join up with the Marines. There we get our first mate Zoro and defeat Captain Morgan. It's quite easy. These opponents won't be very much of a threat and if you know these videos with random One Piece stories, you know where the bigger stops will be in the future. Now we get to the second arc of the story. We get to Orange Town, where we have to fight against Buggy. And I don't know how exactly Buggy would work against this sort of character with who actually already possesses Haki and all of these things. So because he's immune to slicing attacks, swords would still not work. But Randolph is obviously a spearman, so he would not slice, he would pierce. Buggy is not immune to piercing damage, well he could still split his body and dodge the attacks like that, but let's just say there is not going to be a big problem here. Zoro is going to take care of his opponent, Randolph is not only going to take care of Moji, but also Buggy and Richie, and he's going to have a very sweet moment with Choo Choo, because Bunny and Dog, well they're going to get along, I'm sure of that. Then we get to our third arc. Nami is now also part of the crew, not really yet, but she's still on the ship. Our next arc, which is Sire Village, we have not that big of an opponent as well. Obviously Kudo is quite fast, but Randolph is really fast as well. Sadly, he doesn't have his crane to fight because normally Randolph has like his partner Crane, who's another homie, who he can ride on to be way faster and 
surprise attack enemies and just outspeed them, speed blitz and all of these things. But even without the crane, Randolph is not slow. So he would be able to take his W against Kuro as well and win against this character. By the way, have you seen the One Piece live action already? I know it's been out for a few months now, but I really like this rendition of the Syra Village arc. Obviously, it was quite confusing with a few changes here and there, and I don't know how to feel about stealing a few of Usopp's moments, but it was still a great arc overall. In general, I really enjoyed the live action. But let's get to the next arc, which was very different in live action. We get to the Baratie arc. So, here we have Don Krieg, who is our first best who's our first big opponent for Randolph. Sanji is going to take care of Pearl and also Gin. Zoro is going to have his whole thing with Mihawk. And Nami is going to sail away with the Going Merry that we got on the last island. But now we have to fight against Don Krieg. Admiral Don Krieg, the fleet admiral of his own thing. And he's going to lose, obviously. Randolph is a New World Pirate, and Don Creek didn't even make it into the Grand Line. Well, yes, he did get interrupted by Mihawk, who is basically one of the strongest characters in the entire story, but Randolph is a New World Pirate, and Don Creek wouldn't be able to keep that up. We could make an entire video on seeing how far Don Creek could get in this story, because he is not weak. If he did not get interrupted by Mihawk, he for sure would still be sailing around the Grand Line and probably growing in power. Just imagine how powerful he could take technically get because he is quite smart and once characters like Pearl, Gin and also himself learn about armament hockey and observation hockey, they're going to grow quite powerful and I think they are being underestimated only because they come from the weakest sea known as the East Blue. But let's get to our next arc and technically the most important arc of the entire East Blue saga. This is the Arlong Park arc and yes, these fights turn out like always. Arlong might be a bigger challenge but Randolph, I don't even know if homies can bleed. And technically, can homies swim? Because the whole thing of homies being created from a devil fruit power, I'm unsure what would happen if a homie gets like submerged into water. I don't know if that has been ever stated. I might need to look that up for future scenarios. But for today, let's just assume that homies can get into water without losing their ability to be alive. So yes, Randolph is also going to win against Arlong and when we get to the arc against Smoker, this is going to be quite problematic because here in Locktown, we don't have dragons saving Randolph. Why would he do that? Obviously he's not his child and Luffy is not here wherever he might be. If they really switch places, that would mean that Luffy is now a member of the Big Mom Pirates, which would also make for a very interesting what-if scenario, because the Big Mom Pirates are basically also all about forming a big family, having fun together, and eating a lot, which kind of fits very well together with Luffy. But let's not get too far away from our main topic, we have to deal with Smoker. But the good thing is, Randolph knows Ahmed Haki and probably also Observation Haki so he could deal with Smoker. And the Smoker as he is right now would not be capable of winning against a New World Pirate. He would fare well on the Grand Line, like on the Paradise part, but on New World? Nah, nah, Smoker is not on that level yet, so he's going to lose and Randolph is just going to set sail together with the Straw Hat Pirates. Well, they're not the Straw Hat Pirates now technically, because right now they would be the Bunny Pirates? The Spear Pirates? What would be a good pirate crew name for a crew that is led by Randolph the Rabbit Homie? That's quite intriguing. But let's continue to the first arc in the Grand Line. We have the arc of Reverse Mountain where we meet Laboon. It's going to happen the same. Instead of a straw hat on his forehead, he's going to have a big big bunny there and it's cute. I mean, Laboon is a great character. And I just like these animal on animal interactions. And it could actually work quite well in a future arc as well. But let's get to Whiskey Peak. Here we don't have any problems as well. Randolph is going to stomp Zoro. Because all of the fights against the different members of Baroque works, I don't really care about them. We're going to win against Mr. 9, Mr. 5, even Miss Valentine is not going to be a problem, and Vivi is going to join us. But the biggest part of the Whiskey Peak arc for me always is the fight between the protagonist and Zoro. It's not a full on fight, a full on serious fight, but it still would happen just for the sake of it. Even if Randolph and other characters would understand more what is going on here compared to Luffy because they are smarter, I still want to see how Zoro would hold up against these different main characters that we have in this story. And 
and Randolph would win. So I would learn a lot from that because he is growing stronger as well. But fighting against a spearman is not something he does all the time. And I wonder if that technically counts as a swordsman as well. Because if we look at the different swords, Whitebeard's Naginata is also called a great sword, even though it's not a sword. So does Zoro really want to become the best swordsman and the greatest swordsman in the world? Or does he want to become the greatest weapon wielder in the world? If Whitebeard's weapon counts as a sword, then technically everything counts as a sword. So maybe the title is actually greatest weapon wielder, but I think the translation for Mihawk's title is not that wrong. And we would have found it out over the course of One Piece. I don't think that we missed some sort of big detail like that for a long time. I don't think we need to talk about Little Garden all that much. Mr. Free and also Miss Golden Week are going to be interesting to fight against. Miss Golden Week might even do a few tricks here and there against our Randolph Bunny, but everything is still going to work out. I mean, you remember how Little Garden played out, right? Everything made sense, Usopp did his job, Zoro was becoming a wax statue, same for Vivi and Nami, and Sanji, well, he did a bit of Mr. Princing around. But now we come to an arc that I look really forward to together with Randolph. I know that I'm not going into the deep, deep details of the arcs, but just seeing Randolph interact with Chopper would be really cute. But the same way like Chopper would be seen as a monster, technically Randolph would be the same case. Randolph would be called a monster, he's not really a bunny, he's not a human, but he's some sort sort of mix in between. So Chopper would see something in Randolph that he technically could not see in Luffy or the other people. He could see that Randolph handles the name of a monster well. He actually respects it and just grows stronger to show all of the people how powerful he actually is. And if they want to call him a monster, that's okay. He's just going to go after his own dream and become the greatest there is. And Chopper, he would become more confident about that as well. He would still be our shy, goofy reindeer boy that we know, but he would be quite a lot more self-confident because Randolph would help him with that. And I think the interactions between two different animals would be very cute to see. Just like all of the animal interactions, we need more animals in One Piece. Now we get to the Alabasta arc. R Crocodile would get washed even more. He's way too confident. Not even thinking that some people here would even have Haki. And Randolph comes running up and he actually has it. Randolph is going to demolish him. And yo, did you see Vivi there in the background? Look at her forehead. Vivi's forehead is ginormous. But yes, this arc is going to turn out the same. We're also going to form a relationship together with Bon Clay and Robin is going to join us. And well, we're going to win. Smoke is going to be there, all of these different things. And Randolph is just going to take the crown and dip out of the island as soon as possible. Same for Jaya and also Skypea. Jaya is just going to be a part where he's going to one-shot Bellamy because he's way stronger than him. And then we get to Skypea, an arc that I normally skip over because it's way too dangerous for most of the characters in the story because they don't have rubber powers and don't have Haki. But if we look at Skypea, here and see that Randolph actually is in possession of both Haki types, he's going to be able to deal with Enel. Well, Enel is going to have better observation Haki, but he's going to be very confused how something is going to hit him. Because Randolph is going to fight against him with a spear, and Enel is not going to dodge. He's not going to think that anything is going to be able to pierce him. But then, this armored Haki covered spear is going to get straight through his stomach, and he's going to splurt out blood, and he's going to be very furious. Then a big battle battle ensues between the thunder god and the rabbit god and we have a big big fight. The biggest fight there was so far because I technically think Enel could also survive in the new world. Well he would face difficulties because of people having armor and haki but that's just how powerful this devil fruit really is. He could go down there. I mean his bounty would be 500 million berry right? That's what Oda said. So that's a new world bounty so he would be able to survive there. Then we come to Long Ring Long Land Arc. It's not that important. Randolph is going to put on an afro, fight against Foxy, and is going to win. And then we get to Water 7. Water 7 technically did not have that many problems. We're going to have a fight between Randolph and also Usopp, which is going to be interesting, because I don't think that Usopp would get along as well with Randolph as he did with Luffy. So I will be interested in seeing how this is going to turn out. But it's going to be the same scenario where Usopp leaves, gets together with Frankie, they go to the different islands, and we get over to the next arc, which was the stopping point for other arcs so far. Eni's Lobby. This time, however, I think it might go different. Is Luchi 
a character who is said to have possessed basically both arm and observation as well, even though we haven't seen it, is he weaker than Randolph? Randolph is a fighter on Big Mom's crew who goes on a lot of missions. Luchi is an agent for CP9, one of the most important groups of the world government as well. But is he going to fix it? Well, we are still unsure how a homie buddy really would interact with attacks and all of these things. Would he get exhausted? Can he get exhausted at all? Those are the questions we really need to figure out. But let's just say, homies have infinite stamina. The only thing that can stop them is if their body gets entirely obliterated. And so, Randolph and all of the other people are the first to actually get through this arc. They are the first crew to get through the 80s lobby arc and continue sailing. So post 80s lobby is also not going to matter. It's more of a calm down arc where we see the interaction between Shanks, Whitebeard, Blackbeard capturing Ace. All of these things are going to happen. But for us, it's not that important. So Kobe and Helmepo would still come here because they have a connection with Randolph. But how would Garb interact here? Garb would not have to tell Randolph all of the secrets about his father and family. But instead of talking about the connection to Dragon, we might have something where Garb talks that Randolph is actually a homie and has a connection to the Big Mom Pirates. Randolph knew that, but he kept it a secret so far from his crew. And everybody is going to surprise that Randolph technically is a runaway member of a Yonko crew. So that's going to be another dynamic for the future. Then we get to the Thriller Bark arc. Ooh, I don't know how this is going to turn out. We got so far, but in the end it doesn't even matter, because I don't know if homies have willpower. Homies and zombies are quite similar in some sort of ways. The only thing different here is that the homies are created from souls from actual people, and then shadows are input into zombies for the bark, so how different are they? And then we had the idea that Luffy only won because he was able to take in all of these shadows. And would a homie be able to do that? So I would really think, even though he would be able to defeat Enel, I don't think he would be able to defeat Maria. Just because he would not be able to take in all of these shadows, or shadows are also very similar to the connection of a soul. Because he already has one soul in him with the homie thing, I think the powers from the soul soul fruit and the powers from the shadow shadow fruit would not really mesh well together. And because those powers wouldn't mix, that would mean that Randolph wouldn't be able to get the powers. And I just say, Maria is stronger than Randolph, and we're going to lose here. But if we didn't, let's go to a fast idea and see how everything would else turn out. We get to Sabaody and we would be fine there. We would get separated by Kuma because that's what he does and we're going to get there. Then we get to Amazon Lily where we're going to have some sort of interaction with Boa. Even though Randolph would not really get to Amazon Lily. Where the hell would he even get teleported to? So when a character gets this far in the story, I need to figure out which island is the best for our new main character because it's not Amazon Lily. The entire connection between the Stride Pirates and Amazon Lily with Boa's kingdom technically wouldn't happen. The same for Impel Down, that just wouldn't happen because none of the characters would be interested in saving Ace. By the way, I just noticed that Impel Down is an arc where we got introduced to a Tontata even before knowing the Tontata's existence. Maybe they were listed on some sort of slavery auction in the Sabaudi arc, but this is the first time we actually see one, I think. Then we can skip over the war arc and also over Luffy's past arc. We could have some sort of flashback arc where we get introduced to Randolph's past, but I don't know how that would work because we don't know too much about him, but for the sake of an actual story, yeah, that would happen. And then return to Sabaudi. Everything works out here. Randolph trained for two years, but the question is, can homies grow stronger? Or do they only grow stronger when the soul grows stronger? I'm unsure of the entire thing. So then we get to Fisherman Island, where the question pops up again if a homie can even go underwater. And here the biggest problem ensues, because we have our first encounter with the Big Mom Pirates, which technically the Randolph Pirates or the Bunny Pirates would be affiliated to. So we're going to have way more importance in the Big Mom arcs than anything else. And let's just be honest. The entire time skip of two years can work so well for us that technically speaking we could say that Randolph could get through the entire story. We don't know how strong he could grow in two years if he was already new world level before. So maybe he could grow on the same parts as Luffy and get powerful enough to fight against Yonkos. Or maybe he would struggle against Doflamingo and lose in the Dressrosa arc. That's very hard to ensue. But I think Randolph would be able to get to the post time skip era. Argue about the whole soul things with the Thriller Bark 
arc, but maybe he can actually take them in. It's unclear. But what do you think? How far would Randolph the bunny human actually get? Tell me in the comments. But for now, that's all from me for today. All that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay cultured. Pyro, out. Bye!